Hi and welcome, it's Jennifer. I hope you're having a wonderful day. I wanted to do a product release close-up showing the newest products from Simons Stamp. These are part of their December release. December is a month-long celebration of die cutting, so these include a bunch of different dies. Wanted to do a close-up video so you could get a better look and get some ideas for using them. So let's dive in. The first one is the hand lettered greetings. Now this has five different long greetings with Christina Warner's beautiful writing. You can see the different greetings here and they stretch nicely across a card. I like that these are so detailed and so intricate and fine. Now you can use them stretched along a card or you can cut the little um, beginning and ends off to create a smaller die cut like I did here with the hello. I like small intricate dies like the die cuts like this because you can add them on the top of a card afterwards so you don't have to find the perfect placement. I look forward to die cutting a bunch of the same words and gluing them onto a background for like a tone on tone textured background. Next we have the Missing You die set. Now this has three dies in it, all that say Missing You, but in different font styles, which is a great option to have. The script is definitely my favorite, but you can see the other two font styles here. They are perfectly sized. They work great on a card, even vertically. They fit nicely across it. Now you could die cut this from the front of a card and allow different card stocks to show through or even create a shaker window behind it. But what I want to do is just add these letters to the top of a finished card. Now, placing little die cuts can be tricky, like that top missing you where each little letter is separate. What I recommend doing is putting the negative space of the die cut down onto your card, then put glue on the back of each individual letter and fit them into the negative space. Then once it's dry, take the negative space away and they'll be perfectly spaced on your card. Okay, now here is another example, same thing, but this says stay strong, which is a great sentiment. I don't have that in anything else, so I was excited to see this die set. So you can use either of the three options once again, or you could mix them all together on a card for a fun background. Along the same lines is heartfelt. Again, there are the three different options of fonts in the set. I have my dies connected here, by the way, and you, but you can cut them apart to use individually. Heartfelt is a great message that works on a for a variety of occasions, so this is another good one to have. Next, we have the window panes. This has three small window dies, and actually one of them pops apart too, so there's actually four dies. What you can do is die cut one of these windows from the front of a card, so you create a window that shows through to the inside. Then you can stamp something on the inside of your card that you can see from the outside, so it kind of shows through the window, maybe a cute little critter or something a little more classic behind it. You can fit a few of these windows on the front of a card also. So I like that there are a few different options. You could also do a fun stained glass technique here by maybe doing some watercolor, then do die cut inlay and fit all those pieces into the panes. A lot of things that you can do with that set will be fun to play with. Next, we have the curly streamers. This, of course, would be great for a background on maybe a party or birthday card. Have a bunch of these hanging down. You can overlap them. It'd be even fun to do out of either a glitter paper or a vellum and layer them all over. What I think would also be fun is to turn them sideways and kind of have them be like ribbons coming out from behind an embellishment. So say this is maybe a die cut heart that I put over it and you just have the ribbons kind of flowing out from the side. Sometimes you want something behind a die cut to add some interest and these fun little ribbons could be just what you need. Now this heart die is one of my favorites in this release. In fact, I recently did a video using a similar style die, but it was a tree. Great technique with it, so I'll link to that here in case you want to check it out. Now this heart is nice and large, be fun for gorgeous die cut inlay technique. By the way, that white cardstock that I have throughout this video is four and a quarter by five and a half, so you can figure out the sizing of each of these die cuts. Here we have the Elegant Roses. This is a very intricate die set. There are two roses in here. You could actually make a third or fourth rose by just die or by just hand cutting a few of the petals off of each of these. Then you can have roses of different sizes to add to it. This would be fun to die cut from different cut shades of the same color of cardstock and layer on top of each other for a gorgeous layered flower. You could even create a leaf out of one of those petals. 
The circle of leaves dies is another favorite here. Now you could use the negative pieces or the positive pieces together. This would be gorgeous on the front of a card for a window card. Maybe you could color some vellum and put that behind the window. You could fill it with lots of sequins behind it. You could do great stenciling techniques with this too. You could die cut this from some masking paper, put it down on a card, gently ink over it, and then remove the mask, and you have a gorgeous, gorgeous look. This one I think you're going to see a lot of different examples with, and I'll be using it in a video very soon. You could add coloring to these leaves very easily, so you can have some shading on them. You could add little flowers on it to make more of a summer card love this die. I hope that they do more like this. This one I think has a lot of versatility to it. Next we have the fold over tree. These die type of dies seem very popular right now. It cuts along the edge, but that one straight line there is a score line. So what you do is you die cut this on the front of a card or cardstock, and then you just fold it over and you have a fun looking tree. Just something a little bit different. You can allow that tree to uh, flap to kind of uh, go freely or put some dimensional adhesive behind it. You could do this off the front of a card and allow some of the inside of the card to show through or maybe make it a shaker card or have some sort of fun vellum behind it if you wanted to. You can see this fills a card quite nicely. Now I am in love with these tiny little bear hugs and bunny hugs. I can't wait to just die cut these out of felt and put tiny little faces on them, maybe just two little eyes with some enamel dots. I love that little heart that it die cuts from the center. You could die cut that from a red color and add that back in place. Very simple to use and you can team up any small sentiment with that. Next we have the penguins. So this cuts a large and a small penguin, has all the little bits and pieces so you can kind of inlay them in together, which is really fun. You can also do other things with the little pieces, add little accents to the penguins if you want to. I think this one would also be fun, die cut from felt and adhere to a card for lots of fuzzy fun. This one also you can add some coloring to, and I like that the belly actually has some room to add a sentiment right on it if you wanted to. You could even make a tag out of these penguins. Next we have the Flowing Vines Collage Die. Now this would be great to create a window right on the front of a card. You can see how it fits nicely on that white card there. Now you could use this vertical or horizontal. Horizontal, you could stamp a sentiment on the inside that shows through from the outs this little window. You could do vellum behind it with lots of coloring. You could do an inlay technique. You could add tiny little gems along it as little flowers. This would be beautiful for like a sympathy card, for a very simple sympathy card. You could even do it all white for a gorgeous look. Along the same lines is the floral dot collage. Now this one's pretty similar to the other. Um, what's fun about this is that you can actually cut the flowers from the center to have fun little flower accents. So you can add those as like little shaker bits inside of the window or just accents on another card. I like dies that give you options of different ways to use it. Another fabulous die in this release is the birch column die. This is really unique. It stretches across vertically on a card and you can die cut it from the front of a card and it will have all those openings but still be connected. So you can kind of have this floating panel. If you wanted to, you could put a piece of vellum or acetate behind it for a little bit of support. You can do, add little flowers to this to make it more spring-like. You can add snow to it to make it more winter-like. You can put a little greeting over to the left. This is a beautiful set. I think it'd be nice if you did it on the front of a card and had some color peeking through too. Next we have the Spinner Trail Border Die. This one is fun and the more you think about it, the more uses you can come up with. You could stretch this across a card horizontally or vertically. You can repeat it several times to cover an entire background. You can also cut circles out so you have these kind of swirly circles that you can scatter all over a card. Here I'm going to actually cut one with a little bottom to it so that it looks like a balloon. So you could do a bunch of these in different colors, have, it have a bunch of them floating on a card, have some strings hanging down and stamp a birthday sentiment. Now my friend Heather, she mentioned that the little shapes that come out of this border die are the perfect moons. So that's something else that you can use this for. Such a fun border die, It'd be great for a die cut inlay technique with lots of color. Now another one that would be great for die cut inlay is the sunrise border. This looks like rainbows. It'd be fun to do different colors in between all of the die cut here. 
You can also die cut it twice and put one facing up and one facing down right against each other or maybe with a sentiment stamped in between. It also makes a fun little border. So you could do maybe like a background on the bottom part of a card, put this on the top and then the sentiment above it. And it would be fun glued right along the edge of a card. Just cut your card like narrow, a couple or maybe like an inch off the side and glue this on so it kind of hangs off the side of the card. I think it's fun to do that where you make a card that has a shaped edge to it. Makes it something a little bit different. Now here we have the dot, dot scallop border. Scallops seem to be making a big comeback right now. I like that this is on a perfect wave that you can put horizontally or vertically on a card. Now I am big fan of adding hand stitching to cards and you could do some fun hand stitching with the little holes that this border die creates. It would also be fun to have this be the edge of your card. So just die cut one side of the card with this border and have a fun wave. I'm looking forward to using this border die to create some one layer, almost one layer cards that I can put in a note card set. So basically I would die cut this on the front of a card that it would kind of have this floating window area so it would still stay connected. And then I'm going to put some fun colors on the inside of the card that will show through. I then can add a stamped or die cut sentiment right on top of it. And that would be a fun, easy way to create a note card set for someone. One of my favorites in this release is the envelope liner, and there are many ways to use this. I'm gonna quickly show you some of the things that you can do with it, but keep in mind, there's a lot of things that you could do to step up what you do with these dies. First, there is the envelope liner, and this die cuts an envelope liner that is perfect to put inside the Simons' stamp kind of square edge envelopes, and it is for a four and a quarter by five and a half inch card. So you can cut the envelope liner, which I'll show you in a moment what I do with that. You can also use the dies in the set to cut the flap of your envelope. That way you can show something through it or show the liner that's on the inside. But these are sized perfectly to fit nicely along the flap of an envelope. So here is the envelope liner. I'm gonna show you how to put that into a regular card. So easy to do. It has a little slit so it allows your envelope flap to close nicely. There are other ways you can use this also. You could stamp on this or use some pattern paper scraps for your envelope liner just to kind of spice up what your, the inside of the envelope looks like. It does leave the room so that you can seal your envelope nicely also. And I know many of you might be thinking that this is just added steps to your card making, but think about it. You put a lot of effort into the card. You kind of want to deliver it in a nice way. So here I did one of the border dies along the flap. Now you could put some color to peek through behind it. Like for here, I'm just gonna cut a small piece of white cardstock and glue it to the back of this. I could do the envelope liner, but this is a great way if you wanna save the time, you can just put some adhesive on the back and stick a scrap of cardstock there. You could even color it if you want to. Really makes a big difference on making that envelope look extra special. There are a few other border dies in there, including this sealed with a kiss. So I just run adhesive along the back, put a little white cardstock strip and trim off the excess. And that way the white shows through. Again, you could use the envelope liner. However, if I'm making a card with a, quite a bit of bulk on it already, I don't wanna add more bulk with the liner. So doing a strip like this is another option. Keep in mind also that you can use these dies on, your car on the cards themselves. So there are many things that you can do with them. And this is a great way to use up scraps that you may have, maybe pieces of stamping that didn't make it to a card or just some uh, pattern paper scraps. So this is just a set to consider if you really wanna step up how you mail or deliver your handmade cards. Okay, the last die to share is the Magic Slider die set. Before I show you the die, I want to show you what it creates, the type of card, so you can kind of see where we're headed with it. Basically, it is a card with a piece that you can pull out the side to reveal something hidden inside, maybe a greeting, or you can use it for what they call a magic slider technique, which is where the outside is kind of like the outline of some coloring, but then when you slide it open, you see some color on the inside. I'll show that technique in a future video, but you can use this just to create a slider card. Really basic, you can do whatever you want at a greeting on the inside. So now that you kind of see what a magic slider card looks like, let's go ahead and put this together. I'm just gonna do a real quick mock-up or kind of prototype to show you today, but I thought it would be helpful in deciding if this die set is one that you would like to get. 
Okay, so I'm going to use all the dies in the magic slider die set except the rectangle. And I'm just going to cut this from whatever cardstock I want. I decided to use white today. Now the rectangle die, that one you're going to cut use to create a window. So I have a four and a quarter by five and a half inch piece of white cardstock because that's the size note card I want. And I'm going to position the rectangle kind of to the bottom right. This seems to work really well with this particular magic slider die set. So I'm going to run that through my die cut machine. And again, we're using the negative space where we have a window. I also have another piece of white cardstock cut to four and a quarter by five and a half, same as the window piece. Now I'm going to end up gluing these together eventually, but not yet. I'm first going to lightly trace onto the solid piece, the rectangle window, so I know where to place my slider. Now this is the slider piece and I need to put a stopper on it so that when I pull the slider, I don't actually pull the piece out of the card. I want it to stop before it comes out. So that's the little stopper piece that'll be on the end of the slider. People won't see that. Next, I'm placing my little slider piece right over that pencil window that I drew, making sure that it's hanging out a little bit to the right of the card. See how the little handle's hanging out to the right? Now I'm going to draw a line along the stopper over there. So I need to put another piece there so that they hit up against each other and we don't lose our slider piece inside the card. So I'm going to glue one of the other die cut stopper pieces, which is part of the die set, right along that pencil line. So now when you push this piece back into the card, these two stopper pieces hit each other and you don't lose the slider inside the card. Next, we need some tracks that go above and below our little slider piece so that we can easily slide it in and out of the card and it stays nice and straight. So I'm going to place my slider piece with the two stoppers up against each other and I'm going to glue one of the track pieces, again, these are in the die cut set, one up against the bottom and then one up against the top of those little stopper pieces. So you'll see there's a little gap there below the slider piece itself, but these are going right up against the top and the bottom of those stopper pieces. Now keep in mind, you can arrange this little slider window to be anywhere on a card. I plan to make this one vertical so that you pull the slider out the bottom of the card and it reveals a little critter hidden inside, but you can use it in many ways. So here is the other track I'm gonna put up against the other side of the stoppers. Now you can see there's this little area where I can pull this slider out to the right so that I can reveal what's inside once we put the card together. Now when you put the card together, you want your slider piece to be upside down so the stopper is on the back so that people don't see the stopper when they pull the tab. So make sure that you flip that over and then you can glue the other piece on top. Let me show you where I put the adhesive so that I can be sure that the slider moves freely and so that the slider doesn't pull out of the card. So I'm putting my slider right into this spot where it will fit and I have some strong double-sided tape. The first pieces I'm going to put down will go over the track right up against to the, the edge of that slider piece. So this adhesive will be my stopper to keep the slider piece from coming out of the card completely. So now I'm going to put another one right up against the edge of the slider so that there's just enough room between those two pieces of double-sided tape that the thin slider piece will fit. Now the rest of my adhesive will go on the outside edges, all three of the other outside edges, so that we can seal this closed. Then we will put some of this adhesive right along the tracks on the side and that outside stopper piece. So we just want to make sure that nobody tries to open this card and that our slider moves freely. So now I can remove all the release paper. And by the way, if you don't have a double-sided tape like this, you can use a strong like tape runner or whatever, but I do recommend using a tape. I think it's much better because you can provide those stoppers to keep the slider from coming out. Or you could use foam tape for this if you really wanted to. You just wanna make sure that you have that block so the slider doesn't come out. There are other ways to do it, but I found this to be the quickest. Now before we glue this together, go ahead and erase your pencil line and then you can glue the front right onto it and there we have our little panel and then I realized I forgot to put the slider piece in so it was better to have that in originally but I just wanted to show you that it's okay. Now that it's in its place, I can push that tape down and check it out. My slider pulls in and out nicely, no problems at all. 
So this was my practice run with this die set. You could make it so that the slider comes out any direction on the card. In fact, I plan to make this one be vertical once again with the slider coming out the bottom, but you can do sideways as I'm showing here. Now, it, this was just my prototype run. If you were creating this, you would want to do your stamping as you go. Maybe stamp something on the inside in that pencil window that you created and something on the outside, the front of this, make them all line up. You can have a greeting that's on the front of the slider and then when you pull it open, you see more of the greeting on the inside. You could write your own personal message in there. A lot of different things that you can do with this slider feature. Now this is just a panel. If you want to, you can glue it to the front of a card. And if you want it to fit in your envelope, you'll want to trim a little bit off the left side of the card so that it fits with that little, um, the little tab sticking out. So I just wanted to show you how this is assembled. I'll be sure to do some videos in the future showing different techniques that you can do with it. But it's one of those that you can get a lot of fun looking cards with. So there you have a closer look at the Simon Says Stamp release. I hope it's helpful in seeing all the products up close. All the products are linked below in my YouTube description and over on my blog. And in the middle are two other videos. These are about die cutting that might inspire you with the, the dies I showed you today. Thanks for watching. We'll see you soon and have a wonderful day.